1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. As a fellow elder, a witness of Christ's sufferings, and a partaker of the glory to be revealed, I appeal to the elders among you. Be shepherds of God's flock, that is among you, watching over them, not out of compulsion, but because it is God's will, not out of greed, but out of eagerness, not lording, lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherds appear, chief shepherd appear, sorry, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Young men, in the same way, submit yourselves to the elders, and all of you clothe yourselves with humility to one another, because God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Need my glasses. <laughs> so I'm going to read 1 Timothy 5, 17 to 21. And before I read it, um, when we had a prayer meeting here a while ago, we had candles out on the tables, I remember. God gave me this first verse um, for our leaders, and I just want to honour our leaders. <laughs> we've got some wonderful leaders now, and we've had some wonderful leaders in the past as well. And I just want to thank you for all that you do for us and you've done for us. <laughs> so... 1 Timothy 5, 17 to 21. The elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honour, especially those whose work is preaching and teaching. For the scripture says, do not muzzle the ox while it is treading out the grain, and the worker deserves his wages. Do not entertain an accusation against an elder unless it is brought by two or three witnesses. Those who sin are to be rebuked publicly so that the others may take warning. I charge you in the sight of God and Christ Jesus and the elect angels to keep these instructions without partiality and to do nothing out of favoritism. Thank you. Well, I'm really interested to see what Dave has got to say to us after reading those passages. <laughs> But I'm sure God has got something special. So, Lord, just be with Dave. Bless him and bless us with all that he has to say. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Oh, I'm not having that. <laughs> All the way from Salford for that. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. That's a bit better. <laughs> Have you had a good week? Yeah, yeah. yeah done, done something interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I had to work in London this week. It's a busy place, isn't it? Uh, people running around. <laughs> but you, you know what was interesting? Is whatever type of week we have, is actually, it's like a journey, isn't it, with God? You start at the start of the week, Sunday the first day, and you go through the week. And put your hand in his hand and going through the week. I've had a bit of a privileged week this week. Some weeks are harder weeks, some weeks are more privileged weeks. This was a bit more privileged week. So I had to go down with it. We put on an event on in London and, and different things happened and... I got to hear some amazing stories face to face with different people of what God's doing. I love weeks like that. When, when you, you're not just hearing all the issues and the problems, you, you get them as well, but you hear some stories. I was talking to a mate of mine at this event he called Andy Flanagan, and Andy works in Parliament. And he was telling me some of the stuff that's going on in Parliament, some of the prayer stuff, and they got the National Prayer Breakfast this coming week in Parliament. And just a little warning for you. At the end of last year's National Prayer Breakfast, Boris lost his job. <laughs> Just a little warning, they've got another one this coming week. And, and so just to hear the story, because sometimes we think about these places being remote from us. Sometimes we think they've not got a connection. Sometimes we think, is anything good happening there? But people are praying. 
where people are praying and people are listening to God, who knows what can happen? You know, just, at this event, we had people from all over the country there, and you just, just hearing stories of Lincoln. Lincoln, they've, they've, had, they, they've linked up with the NHS from the church in Lincoln to help with mental health. It's a big issue, like it's in a lot of places in Lincoln. They've been working there with the NHS. And as churches have been commissioned to help turn around the mental health of Lincoln. Why? Because God, God's a listening and a caring God. And he can help people at the point of need. You know, listening to all sorts of stories like that this week and just realising that God ain't finished yet. When I stick my hand in his hand at the start of the week, who knows? Who knows as I journey with him, as he shepherds me through the week? I just want you to stop just for a second this morning before we get into the passage, before we talk about leadership. I want to just stop and think about what's your expectations of this coming week? What's your expectations of meeting with God this week? What's your expectations of hearing from God this week? What's your expectations of journeying with God through the week? Now, for some of us, we may be looking at a, a week we're really excited about. And for some of us, we may be looking at a week we've got a bit of trepidation about. But you know this one thing certain? That he never leaves us and he never forsakes us. So at the start of a week, I can get my mitt. You can tell I come from Solver, can't you? I can get my mitt. And I can stick it in God's hand at the start of the week. And I can, in a sense, recommit myself to drawing close to him. Because when I draw close to him, he draws close to me. I like going to walk with my dad. When I was young and used to go and walk with my earthly father, I can't do that anymore, but I can go and walk with my heavenly father. And do you know what? In one, he never leaves me off or sakes me, but one, he can do immeasurably more than I can ever ask or imagine. Imagine that at the start of the week. I can stick my hand in God's hand and go through the week knowing he can do immeasurably more. And I want to, I just feel it's right just to speak this to you this morning. Don't lose hope. Keep your eyes on him. He's able to do it. Whatever it is you're thinking of, whatever you're dealing with, he's more than able. And he's with you. Do you know, I was asked to talk about leadership. I'm going to talk about leadership in a second. It's an amazing subject for me. Because I get so many people who come to me over the years and go, I want to be in leadership. And my first reaction sometimes is, do you really want to be in leadership? Because <laughs> it's, it's not always easy. But the next thing is, is, what sometimes people want is a position with a job title. Yeah, that's, you can have a job title, you can be given a job, but it doesn't mean you're a leader. There's one interesting thing with a leader, it comes back to being a shepherd in Jesus' time, in the passage we, read, we just had read to us. There's one thing with a shepherd, the sheep followed the shepherd. The shepherd didn't have a whistle and a dog that snaps at the sheep like we do in our country. The sheep followed the shepherd. You know, you can be given a job title, but you ain't a leader if there's no one following you. And it's just really interesting as we'll start to unpack what we know. And where you start learning how to be a leader is from the very beginning of your walk with Christ. If you ever, if you, you ever get elevated, <clears throat> if that's the right word, into leadership, you don't start learning there. You start learning being crafted and being moulded. And we all are being moulded in the same way. What did Paul say? Follow me as I follow Christ. So as Paul was following Christ and learning from Christ, he's saying to me, learn from me because I'm learning from Christ. So in other words, you're not learning how to be me, Paul. You're learning how to be Christ-like. I find that really exciting because I know 
my faubles, that's another funny word. I, I know my insecurities. I know my faults more than anyone else. You know, I have to live with myself. I know my faults. And, and in a sense, I know where I can get things wrong. But I know that he, he keeps on changing me and adapting me as I allow him. As I, as I pursue his presence and want to be close to him, and he starts to change me and he influences me, and I become more Christ-like. I know then that, that is an amazing privilege to be discipled by him, to be changed by him. And then I know, actually, I've got something that I can help others with. Why? Because he's placed it in me. I just want to look at these a couple of verses from 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter 5, so starting at verse 2. And it says here, verse 2 to verse 4, it says here, Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care. Watch over them. Do not do it because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve. Not lording it over others, those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive a crown of glory that will not fade away. In the same way, you, are, you younger ones are to submit to those elders. All of you are to be clothed in humility towards one another. But here it says, be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care. Watch over them, not because you must, because you're willing, as God wants you, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over. You know, not lording it over. You think about Jesus. What did he say Jesus was? The servant king. Jesus came to serve. He came to be in a place where others were before him, where he saw the needs of others. What did he do? What was the ultimate thing Jesus did? He went to the cross. He went to the cross and took the punishment for our sins. As a leader, did he speak truth? Yes. Was he truth? Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. It was truth. But he did it in such a way that he served. He wasn't looking to say, people, look at me. In as much he was, he was helping people find them in his Father. It was said of Jesus, he would only ever say what the Father would say and only ever do what the Father would do. You know, shepherds, there's a famous psalm, isn't there, about shepherds. I just want us to look at that for a minute. Psalm 23. Psalm 23. Because we all need to be followers. Even as leaders, we need to be followers. We need to be the ones following. We need to know who we're following. We need to know what we get from the one we're following. And we need to celebrate the fact that we are followers. We need to enjoy the fact that we are followers. Psalm 23 said this, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Just think about that for a minute. David wrote this. David's gone through all sorts of things in his life. And he's there, he said, the Lord's my shepherd. Everything I need is in him. As somebody who's a leader, who's called to co-shepherd with Christ, who's the chief shepherd, in a sense, as, as a leader, we, leaders have got to be able to look to the shepherd, look to Christ. And go, all that I need is in him. And my job as a co-shepherd is to appoint the sheep to the shepherd. And to introduce to the shepherd. And to draw people aside with the shepherd. And help people spend time with the shepherd. Facilitate that place where people can meet with the shepherd. And realize that all that is in him is all that they need. That you lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He, he guides me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. 
as a leader, my job is to point you to Jesus Christ. As a leader, my job is to serve you. We'll get into, we'll, in a second, we'll get into the character of a leader and the ways of doing that. But as a leader, I'm going to point you to Jesus. In a way, I want to direct you to Jesus. In a way, I want to lift Jesus up. In a way, I want to help you worship him. In a way, I want you just to spend time in his presence, to love just being in his presence. As a leader, that's what I want to do for you. That's my charge. I'm a co-shepherd, pointing you to the shepherd, pointing you to the Father in the power of the Holy Spirit. I want you to grow. I want you just to love being in his presence. I can remember as a kid when my dad, my dad had a church, he was very busy. But when it, when it got to holiday times, we got my dad. Do you know what I mean? If you've had, ever had dads who've got busy jobs, it comes to holiday time and you get your dad for two weeks. I used to love spending time with my dad when I was younger on holiday. He used to take me crabbing in Anglesey. <laughs> we used to go and do things together. And, and just being in his presence, it was, a, it was, it was great. Do you know now I just love being in my Heavenly Father's presence. I love, do you know what the great thing about it is? I don't have to wait for my summer holidays. I can be in his presence every moment of every day because he never leaves me. He never forsakes me. So for me, I get to spend all my time with my dad, with my hand in his hand. I might be at work. I might be walking down the street. I might be in Tesco or many other supermarkets are available shopping. I might be doing all sorts of things, but I'm there with my dad. And my dad knows everything. My dad knows everyone. He can give me a word of encouragement to say to somebody. He can just drop something in my heart just to relate to something. He can just show me something and say, what do you think about that? Isn't that beautiful? Some scenery or whatever. And he lifts in my spirit. You know, as a leader, I've got to make sure I'm constantly in the presence of God and I'm recognizing and practicing his presence. And as a leader, I want to pass that on to you. It's like a shepherd who's following the shepherd, calling the sheep to come forward and meet the shepherd. Does that sort of make sense? And say you want to get in his presence. You want to celebrate being in his presence. You want to, you want to in a sense, deepen that relationship and pursue his presence. You know, there's something very special to me about being in my Father's presence. And as a leader, I want to pass that on. As a leader, I want to encourage that. Because a leader like me, can own, or, or Graham or your other leadership team, can only be with you for a limited amount of time during the week, physically. But this shepherd, he's with you all the time. You might be going to work, you might get in a tricky meeting at work and you wonder, what should I be saying? He's with you. You might be in a family situation and something's kicking off in the family and you're thinking, how do I handle this? He's with you. He's with you. He knows. You, you, might, you might go shopping in the supermarket and you might bump into somebody and you think, you, you see, they just need something from you, but you don't know how to phrase it. You get stuck for words. Believe it or not, I can get stuck for words. And, and you just want to say something that just meets that person where they're at and just helps them. He's with me. You know what Jesus is called, don't we? The Word. He's with me. And so for me as a leader, is that thing of being a shepherd with the shepherd, shepherding the sheep is really important. For a leader, I'm, I'm looking for somebody who can, who, who can help me meet the shepherd. Because even, even us leaders need other leaders to help us. So we're looking for people who help us meet the shepherd, who help us abide, who help us be there, who help us connect with him, who help us stay in his presence, not drifting away. 
isn't it really easy, if we're just being honest for a minute, isn't it really easy to drift away from the presence of God in a sense of, for us, when we get busy? Our eyes go on to other things. Our mind gets occupied with other things. And bit by bit, we feel a, we feel a distance. He's not moved, but our attention on him has shifted onto other things. And, and we need leaders who can help us keep and learn how to keep in his presence every moment of every day. This week I was talking to some, uh, some people from Cornwall. We were having a prayer time and praying for them. And it reminded me, he used to be, uh, he used to be an old guy who built churches in Cornwall called Billy Bray. And it was said of Billy Bray, he'd walk down the street and he got, it was an old tin miner who found Christ in the tin mines. And they, they wore clothes, a bit like Lancashire clothes, but not, was not quite the same. But they made, the, they made a noise when you walked down the street. And he used to say, one foot said, praise the Lord. The other foot said, hallelujah. Wherever he was going, he was going, praise the Lord, hallelujah. What's God got for me now? What am I going to do next? What's God going to show me next? And he went through life when he found Christ with an excitement, not a giddiness in a sense of overexcitement, but just a genuine excitement about what God had got for him and what was going to happen next. He was on a journey with God. And so as leaders, you're looking at being a shepherd. You're looking at, in a sense, being that example. We're looking at, like Jesus said, I only want to do what the Father would do and say what the Father would say. But one last thing to think about this. As a shepherd, under the shepherd, as a leader, guess what? You're all my brothers and sisters. If you know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, we're brothers and sisters. It, I, it's family. Do you know when you really love your family and you want your best for your family? So, so it's, it's like parents who want the best for the kids. They'll do anything for the kids. They'll sacrifice for the kids. They'll give for the kids because it's about what, helping the kids the next generation. And grandparents can be like that, can't you? If you're fortunate enough to be a grandparent, you're like that as a grandparent. That's the heart of a leader. A true leader is not there going, Hi, I'm the leader. A true leader is there going, I want to help you. I want to see you succeed. I want to see you fly. I want to see you get the, get, have the best relationship you can have with Christ. I want, to, I want to see you excel in your day-to-day -day life in him. That's a leader. Because a leader is being Christ-like. I love reading the stories in the New Testament of Jesus and the disciples. I always think, Jesus was perfect, sinless. He's been in heaven with Father, the Holy Spirit, with the angels, with the archangels, and now he's with people who find it hard to make the mind up, <laughs> to concentrate and commit. <laughs> We're all like the, the disciples, aren't we, at times? But he, he just loved them. He spent all that time with them. He nurtured them. He saw them come into maturity. Faith. He saw their faith level grow. He didn't expect it to all happen overnight. It was a process, and he went through it with them. And as, and as leaders, you, leaders have got to be people who, who can go through life with others and help others get the most out of that life and enjoy that life in all its fullness. Let's just read another point here. You'll notice my glasses. I've got cataract starting as well now. So if I keep on doing that, excuse me, I've got really big print now. <laughs> on my electronic finger here. <laughs> so 1 Peter, again, just going back to 1 Peter 5, just reading 5, well, 7. 1 Peter 5, 5, well, 7, it says this. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to the elders. All of you clothe yourself with humility towards one another. God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Think about healthy leadership. Healthy leadership, you start to get the character of a leader, and not everyone who has the character of a leader will get leadership. Because we're all called to be leaders. In a sense, if I ask you, do you ever lead anyone? Do you ever influence anyone? 
I can guarantee nearly every, if not everyone in this room, at some point in their life has advised somebody on some, something, has given them a direction to somewhere. So all of you, in a sense, are giving somebody a lead. And in the way we do that, in, in humility, it tells us. And the other thing, the other passage, it helps us think about this as we grow into leadership is Galatians 5, quite a famous passage, Galatians 5, 27. So Galatians 5, 27 is about the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit, you, to be in leadership, you, you, need, you need to have the fruit of the Spirit. As, as well as the humility it's talked about in the last passage, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have been crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and provoking each other. Let, so in the other passage, it talks about humility. In this passage, it's just mentioned the word conceited. Conceited means excessively proud of oneself. It means to be vain. So at one end, you've got somebody who can be vain, who can be excessively proud, who probably tells you everything they've ever done all the time continually and how great they are. And the other side, you've got somebody who's really humble. The humble person is not trying to tell you how great they are. The humble person is seeing where they can help you. A real leader, and, so, and we all grow in these qualities. Some people get appointed to leadership, but we all should be growing these qualities. A real person who's growing the qualities of a leader needs to have an eye for people. Ask you a question. When you see people, what's your first thought? It's just interesting to think about. How do I respond to people? When I look at people, and you know, if I go into a room of people, what am I thinking? Am I looking at where I can help, where I can support, where I can encourage, or am I looking for who can I talk to who's like me? You know, when Christ went into a room, Christ looking for who, is it, who in this room has the Father got me to speak to? Think about that for a second. When Jesus went into a town or into a place, he was looking for who the Father had for him to speak to. And what are the words I'm going to speak to that person? He, he never went into a room to further his career. He never went into a room to impress somebody. He never went into a room to show how great he was. He was just great. He wasn't going in to show them in that sense. He was just himself. When I go into a room, when I go into a place, what is my motivation? If I'm becoming more Christ-like and growing in those leadership qualities which we all should be growing in, when I go into a room, what's my motivation? I've got somebody who I know who comes up to me sometimes. I'm in a room with lots of people who are a lot more a lot more intelligent than me, etc. And he'll walk up to me, and he says it as a joke, but he sent me means it. He'll walk up to me, and he'll go, hi, Dave, chit-chat, chit-chat, chit-chat. Chit, chit. I'm going to go on to somebody else now who can further my career more than you. <laughs> and he walks on. But do you know what I mean? I think he really means it. <laughs> but in a sense, we can have that, can't we? When I go into a room, I want to be Christ-like. Am I always perfect with it? No, but I'm trying to get there with him. I want to go in, so when I'm in this room, say, I'm looking round. Who can I encourage? Who can I speak to? Who can I live? Who can I listen to? Who can I be Christ like to? Who's God got for me? That's a leader. That's somebody with those leadership qualities, leadership abilities. So a leader needs to be a shepherd following the shepherd. A leader needs to have these, that fruit of the Spirit and that humility within them. Just because you're a leader doesn't mean you're any better than anyone else. Now, is a leader worth the pay, etc.? The second passage that was read, yes. You've got to look after leaders, you've got to honour leaders. But a leader has to have a humility. 
A leader has to have the heart of a shepherd. A leader has to show the fruits of the Spirit. Let's just read them again one last time. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. A leader needs to love. A leader needs to have joy. You know, in Nehemiah it says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. You need a lot of strength. It needs to have forbearance. It needs to be kind. It needs to show kindness. It needs to be aware of people. You can be a great planner and a great orator, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're a great leader of men, of people. You've got, you got to have that kindness, that goodness, that faithfulness to people. You've got to have a gentleness. A great leader isn't necessarily an aggressive person who's demanding. A great leader can coach and bring out of you that walk with God in a way that just releases you. Doesn't make you feel pressurized. What, it's interesting when you're around people, your body language, isn't it? I can find if I'm around somebody who's really trying to push me into something, I can feel my shoulders curling in. Because it's like, I don't like it. But somebody who just speaks to me, like, draws out what God's put in me. Draws out that relationship with God. I can feel myself. I feel my body language changing. It goes on to say, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ have been crucified in the flesh with his passions and his desires. A leader is being constantly changed to become more and more Christ-like. There's one last thing I just want to just mention, just as we're bringing the talk to an end, about leadership and about looking for leaders and people who lead churches. Just looking for my next passage here. Have you notice in the Bible how many books of the Bible are named after places or people of places? And where it says, when it introduces it, like in Ephesians, it says this, Paul, an apostle uh, of Christ Jesus by the will of God to the holy people of... Ephesus and in Revelation it says this in the book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 1 it says this so the angel of the church of Ephesus right and then a bit later on it says to the angel of the church of Semena right place is important if you're going to if you if somebody's leading a church and leading the people of the church not only are they leading the church they need to know where the church is placed and about the place because actually that will impact the church i can tell you a church in crew has a distinctive flavor of crew as well as of christ jesus why because he's placed in crew a church in Manchester will have a different flavour, in a different part of Manchester. A church in London, I was in a church, I've been in the last few days, I've been in churches in different places, and they all have a flavour of that place, or of the community of that place, or of the characteristics of that place. I was working this week with a friend of mine, a guy called Paul Hildreth. Paul Hildreth worked in the office of the Deputy Prime Minister when they were sorting out the regions for the regional mayors. He was one of the people behind that. And he used to work in Croydon Council. And Paul said this, he said, at Croydon Council, you were on the ground and you knew all the parts of Croydon, how Croydon worked. I got seconded to the office of Deputy Prime Minister and at the end of my first day, my wife said to me, what's the difference? He said, the difference with the office of Deputy Prime Minister is this, it's like you go into an aeroplane to take you up to 30,000 feet, you look down and go, that's England and Wales and Scotland and Northern Ireland. But you're looking at it from such a height that every place looks the same. And so you treat every place the same. And you become place blind because you don't see the differences. So a great leader needs to understand the geographical place where their church is based because you are God's witness to that place. When Paul went to one place, he went to, the, he went to a statue of the unnamed God and used, he started to understand the place. And that's what he spoke about and where he spoke from. So understanding the place and to speak into the place. So a church leader doesn't just speak to the congregation. A church leader speaks into the life of the place they're in. 
That can, that can look different ways in different places, in different people. But when, when you look at leaders and leadership, we're all on a journey where we're all developing. But today we just reflected on some of the things a leader needs to be. Needs to be humble, needs to be kind, needs to know how to love, needs to know how to have joy, etc. Et the character of the leader is as more important than the vision. The vision's important as well, don't get me wrong. But if the character's not right, guess what? You ain't delivering the vision. And we're all responsible to grow in that character. We may be picked to be leaders in the future, we may not be, but we're encouraged to grow in the ca- that same character. Let's pray. Father God, we just, we just want to be quiet before you just as a, a minute or two as we're finishing before I hand back. To gra- um, hand back. Father, we want to say that this week we want to put our hand in your hand and we want to say this week we want to stay in your presence. We want to have our eyes attuned to you, our ears attuned to you. And Father God, we want to walk in that fruit of the Spirit. We want to walk in humility. We want to walk as leaders, whether we're appointed to be church leaders or not, we, we influence people for you wherever we go. We want to walk like that. We want to just rejoice and just practice your presence. And this week also, Father God, we want to honour our leaders and thank you for them and pray for them and pray for future leaders. We ask for this in the name of Jesus. Amen.